Yeah, Mr. Uh, K.D. Singhji, can you listen me? Yeah, Mr. Singh, can you hear me?
ठीक है ये शैलेंद्र जी कैन यू हेयर मी प्लीज नाउ चैप्टर I would also like to welcome Mr. K. D. Singh. He is President Elect at Delhi Chapter of Fishery. Now I would like to introduce Professor Ahmed. He is full-time Professor of of Mechanical Engineering since two thousand and twelve, and official consultant at Architect and Housing Institute at Housing and Building National Research Center. Head of MEB Technical Reviewers Committee at HBRC. He is the past president of Ashri Cairo chapter. Ahmed was graduated from the Faculty of Engineering at Cairo University at 1988 and got his MSc and PhD from the same university at 1993 and 1999 respectively. He started his career at 1985 in Cold Air, which was the oldest HVAC equipment manufacturer and MEP contractor related to government sector. After graduation. He continued working in cold air in till 1998. After getting his MSc, he worked for many international consulting firms for design and supervision of different HVAC and fire engineering project pro projects. Professor Ahmed has established his private consulting firm during 1992 that named Luki Egypt. So Luki is working for both of perspective and. performance based designs and supervisions for different hvac and design engineering projects it has more than 25 years experience in middle east working for continuous education engineer hvac design cfd prediction validated by field test for a smoke management application and fire study strategies also hvac climate control system so it was all about Please, the Professor Ahmed. Now I request Mr. K. K. D. Singh to deliver the welcome address and opening remark. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shailendra ji. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my privilege and honor to welcome you all here uh, for this uh, uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation that is going to happen, which is about the smoke management systems. i think one of the most uh, intriguing and uh, very exciting uh, uh, subject is the smoke management of buildings it's not a, not only important for uh, the life and safety of human beings but uh, also a very major compliance issues so based on the country that you are in and the, and and the place that you are in i think the 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 codes uh, do vary but in general the smoke management system uh, has got only one single objective that is to uh, save human life and uh, uh, we have the privilege uh, and honor to have uh, professor uh, ahmed fahim uh, here i think he brings in a lot of experience uh, both in terms of uh, his practical experience and his uh, theoretical knowledge of being a professor so uh, without taking much time uh, uh, i would uh, i i would uh, hand this over to uh, professor uh, fahim for his uh, for his uh, presentation i hope all of you uh, would enjoy it and uh, uh, you know welcome once again on behalf of delhi chapter of ishre the ashre india chapter and the ashre rajasthan chapter for this uh, webinar on the smoke management systems thank you over to you shailendra yeah i request all the participants to raise the query through question and answer tab only professor ahmed will answer after your presentation you can also download the presentation in handout section now i request professor ahmed to deliver the presentation presentation on smoke management over to you sir Yeah, Professor Ahmed, over to you. 
Professor Ahmed, are you there, sir? Uh, Challenger ji, is uh, Professor there? He is there, but uh, uh, I think some problem is there. So, so how do we contact him? Yeah, I'm sending message. Thank you. Yeah, 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 Professor Ahmed, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you. First, uh, my young brother, Chandle Chalindra, for this yeah, yeah. nice presentation. And today, uh, we will discuss together the needs for smoke management systems. As you know, uh, recently it became uh, a mandatory issue. And uh, for most of the developing countries, the designers looking for make a smoke management system in any building. Today, our main objective is to define which buildings need the smoke management system. First, we have to define some issues to be aware of the smoke management system. It's a pure mechanical system and needs a mechanical engineer to uh, prepare it and to couple it with the fire protection system and uh, with the air conditioning system and ventilation systems also. Normally, to do a fire engineering, a complete fire engineering process, you have to have an expert in the architect engineering and mechanical engineer and electrical engineer and finally one of the professional of the fire strategies the peoples who can judge the level of the risk the fire risk mainly i mean the fire risk so we can explain the fire engineering or the fire engineering sciences to as you see here in the second slide, fire safety engineering. And normally, uh, they are very specialist in judging uh, the level of risks. And they are aware with the strategies of egress routing. For example, in Egypt, most of the fire safety engineering are architects. But at this, at this cup, last couple of years, we uh, started to uh, have a mechanical and electrical fire safety engineering. The people who are very aware with the uh, prescriptive codes and with the scenarios, most of them took a, a quite uh, courses at the Civil Defense Department to know uh, the equipment that they need to intrude inside the building and how they can think to deal with the fire. Another point, we have the smoke management systems. It could be as a, as a system description prepared by architect or civil or whatever, any engineer who are aware with the fire scenarios. And finally, related to the fire safety engineering, we have to be careful with the building structures. Because if you, if you, you put all the electrical and mechanical fire detection and fire preventing systems, and the structure, it's, uh, it's not quite adapted to sustain the effect of the fire and smoke, the temperature, 
and the uh, 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 transferring of the smoke from zone to another zone okay so you may have a collapse of the building is with the people inside it second we have group of the electromechanical uh, engineers for the fire protection engineering and normally they are mechanical or who are design the uh, fire uh, fighting systems sprinklers screen agents whatever and we have the electrical engineers who are aware and professional in the design of the different uh, fire detections and fire alarm systems according to the type of application and finally we have the automatic fire suppression systems these people who are uh, professional in using the special firefighting system like the foam and the clean agent gases uh, on the other hand we have the management techniques the management techniques it means somebody from our team or, or our fire engineering team who shall prepare the fire strategies according to the application and the type of occupancy and very important issue the mentality of people and their culture the 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 engineer who will make the management techniques shall consider all the disciplines that we will discuss it later in other slides in details okay to calculate some parameters which play a vital role in the design of the fire engine. Uh, then we have the to collect all these designs, fire alarm, fire detection, fire scenarios, calculating the fire loads, management techniques, and we sit, you can say we can sit or we can meet with the professional people in the civil defense. To study other issues like the external hazard or the effect of the fire of the building to the adjacent buildings these items could be uh, addressed and uh, studies in our designs but it's it's a little bit complicated and needs a huge and long experience okay in the urban fabric this uh, experience we cannot find it uh, simply uh, with our team so we have to sit with the civil defense people the experts there and to discuss these uh, uh, issues and also the uh, engine access where they can stop with their uh, equipment and uh, how they can uh, intrude or get inside the building in a safe way to uh, to be care with the old people inside it or the handicapped or whatever then after that we can got a set of methodologies okay from the management techniques and from the civil defense in accordance with what we studied by our team for the uh, architect and uh, civil engineers and mechanical and electrical. So this is the structure of the fire engineering sciences. You can find that we, we cannot work alone. We have to work in a team. And for this point, for the HVAC people who are aware and responsible for the design of the smoke management system, they have to know in, in, in the details all the other, other disciplines and when they can say these buildings need a smoke management system or uh, don't need these systems, especially that these systems are superimposed on the HVAC system. And we add another equipment and extra devices and controllers so you increase the cost and the budget cost of the project very sensibly. Here again, 
we can say that the fire engineering sciences include the fire protection engineering, design of automatic fire suppression system, and design of fire detection system, as we mentioned before, fire safety engineer, design of fire strategies. Here we stated the role of each uh, participant in the team. Okay, uh, design of fire strategies with egress routing. Egress routing it means the escape routings, design of smoke management systems, structure fire protection measures, how we can evaluate that this structure of the building can be sustained for any fire from this fire who will specify in our scenarios. And finally, the fire management and safety techniques, integrated design with authority having jurisdiction, it means the civil defense, to obtain a complete of this set of methodologies. Here, this is the common practice devices and equipment that we use. We have a fire ex extinguishers, different types. We have rear hose cabinet, hydrant types, uh, the Siamese connections to feed water outside from outside the building, the sprinklers, uh, and this is the landing valves. Uh, this is external uh, Siamese connection or the fire brigade connections with different sizes or connections to connect hoses here. Here, this is the clean agent gases. When we, some special application needs a, a gas suppression system to stop the fire and uh, protect the equipment. For example, the data centers, to, you want to protect the data, but you want to stop the fire. Okay, here it's another uh, quick coupling connections. Here, the design, six schematic of the design of the clean agents and here these sprinklers, and this is for the foam system using in the uh, petrochemicals, uh, for example, petrochemicals factories. Normally, all this uh, equipment uh, defined very clearly by all prescriptive codes. This means that we have to follow what is this the city said about the code each city has its own implementing regulations as a part of the local codes of the country so we have to define type of codes we have three types internationally for the codes we have the prescriptive codes where in this code the country stated the minimum requirements by fixed parameters. For example, I need uh, to use this type of sprinklers with the amount of water to be sprayed if I have a fire inside an office. So you have a uh, fixed parameters, you can increase over it, but you cannot decrease. Otherwise, you are not code compliance. The second type, which is rarely used in the fire engineering, is the trend of codes, and it's 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 something in between between prescriptive codes and performance-based codes. Okay, uh, where we put the thresholds or a, a, a thresholds, it's similar, nearly similar, the fixed parameters, but for a performance of a system or performance of a special discipline. And finally, we have the performance-based code, which is now become a commonly used for very special building and the huge buildings that are not stated very clearly in the codes uh, locally or internationally. And you can find the basics of the performance-based code, by the way, at the uh, NFPA, for example, it's in the dungeon, or uh, the British standard. They stated what is the requirements to uh, use the performance based code. So these are the type of codes. And the approach of these three types of codes, based on equivalency or comparative concept, you compare your design and your application and your occupation level of the people with other uh, well designed and well tested system. And we have a deterministic based approach, okay, 
that you can prove by evidences that your design okay, and your initial assumption will be uh, uh, quite uh, efficient for evacuation of the people or the evacuation of the people and the time of, of this evacuation and also the, the, the time for the civil defense people to get inside the building. And finally, we have the probabilistic expected approach. Okay, and in this approach, we are proved by other ways, uh, like the uh, CFD, computational fluid dynamics, or other uh, ways that the system will work properly. This figure shows the conclusion of the uh, of this lecture simply if we have a fire inside the building so first thing that we operate is the fire alarm and then if the fire increased then the fire fighting devices will operate automatically or the people who are working for the security or for the cleaning okay we notice this fire and we will start to uh, protect and prevent it manually using uh, the hoses and rails or uh, with water or with uh, fire extinguisher but at the same time with when the people inside the building hear the alarm or the fire we have some seconds before they believe that there is a fire. And we have some seconds also, some minutes, to take the action or to decide that they, they will leave okay, the place where uh, uh, they know the fire. And then they have some minutes also okay, to uh, uh, to find their way or their best way okay, to go out of the building. All these times, okay, we accumulate it. It will uh, generate a certain amount of minutes. Normally, most of the prescriptive codes, the American one, the uh, British one, the Japanese one, uh, even the Egyptian one, they said that the evacuation of the building, the normal building, I mean the normal building up to eight floors, up to eight floors, you can you have the ability and you will design your stairs and uh, your uh, width of the doors to evacuate the people within from uh, two and a half minutes Till three and a half minutes. So all the people shall be outside the building. This is uh, the basics where the prescriptive codes start to uh, uh, define their uh, thresholds or their uh, fixed parameters based on this issue. So here we can find this vector, it means the required time available safe escape time the available one and this is the required safe escape time so we will define the a set and the r set a set the available and the availability here it's based on the design the architect design and this is the required we need to save it normally we de we define this time okay before <clears throat> The people sorry before the people leave the building okay according to tenability what is the tenability the tenability criteria it's group of parameters that shall be studied together okay that define clearly the indoor environmental quality of the building or the affected zone by fire inside the building this means that if we want to increase the required civic egress time, so we have to keep 
the indoor environment inside the floor or the space or the zone inside the building safe from smoke and the roots corridors and stairs free of smoke and fire sure okay till a certain time because normally if you, you if you increase the time this means that you increase the quality and the the the, the level of technology of your equipment and this has a, a, a very strong impact on the cost of the project plus also the ducting or the, the 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 air distribution systems that shall collect the smoke and bring it out all these equipment shall be designed to uh, withstand with the effect of the smoke with the temperature okay with the level of technology toxicity okay all these items so our main parameters here to to define if this building need smoke management system or not is the asset and asset and asset shall be uh, established based on your tenability criteria from this Two times normally the available one shall be less than the required because the required set uh, safe uh, sorry safe escape time okay could be increased by a lot of equipment but it would be reflect a very bad cost impact for the project so this chart prepared by the society of fire protection engineers okay long time ago maybe it's updated every two or three years okay according to the time here but we have to re to know something very important this response time the response time here it's related to the culture and the mentality of people and very important issue also okay the recognition time it's re related to the level of culture of the people if they can read and follow and obey okay, the signage of egress route or they insist to escape from the, the same route they that uh, they enter uh, the place this is it will be a very big problem for them so all these times shall be calculated okay by uh, any engineer and it's it's listed in most of the handbooks for the fire engineer. Here we can see start of ignition, the alarm, and we have certain time to the alarm. So we have to be aware with the electrical engineer who designed the fire alarm system. What is the response time of the uh, smoke or uh, flame or gas detectors we have to know this and this response time is changed according to the level of uh, installation of such detect detectors and sometimes if you exceed the 9 meter or 12 meter so it's useless to use it to use the conventional detectors you have to find another way to detect that you have a smoke or a flame or uh, a fire in the ground of such a state. Then we have the pre-movement time. The pre-movement time includes a lot of things. The type of, uh, of clothing for the people. The people in Arabian countries, they don't use uh, in their common uh, daily life, okay, our uh, the, the, the clothes or the common clothes in the Europe. So uh, it will reduce their speed okay, to evacuate. So we have to ask here about what are the common values for the speed of the people, the young, the child, okay, the adults, the old peoples, and different between the between men and women surely and then we have the allowable travel ta travel time 
allowed travel time, it means that the people will consume amount of minutes or seconds, okay, to reach outside the building, okay. This amount of seconds or this uh, travel time, okay, shall be considered with a pure mechanical smoke evacuation, okay, to protect their escape routes. Then, which project shall we deal with? We have here this, this small uh, example, it's applied for Egypt. And I think it's, it will be suitable also for uh, all our brothers in India. The high-rise buildings which stated that the building that over uh, than 20 meters in height. So we have to consider the asset and asset. We have to study it very deeply. And then we have the multi-purpose buildings like, like malls, like operas, like cinemas, uh, like churches, like mosques, okay, where we have a, a high occupant load inside a, a space and you haven't enough doors to evacuate them to the outside or you have enough doors but they are transferring from a space to another enclosed space when we are talking about egress okay or escape route we are talking about from the place of the fire to outside the building where the fresh air and the building that defined by local codes and building laws where uh, we have some special buildings that are related to the military, related to uh, uh, central banks. Uh, it's a small project okay? uh, for uh, industrial type, for the petrochemical industrial types. They have some special buildings that shall be considered a, a, a project that uh, needs a detailed study for a set and R set to judge if we need a evacuation, a smoke evacuation system or a smoke management system or not. And then all the underground structures. Here we have a question marks because the limit of the uh, of the uh, underground structures are completely differentiated be between countries at this moment. Okay, in in Egypt we are talking. Uh, uh, underground structures that that are uh, more than 600 meters, and the bottom level of it does not exceed 10.5 meters. Otherwise, you have to make a smoke management system. Again, this is the definition of the available safe escape time. is defined as the duration of tenable conditions. Okay, within the space, the quantification of a time at conditions become untenable for escape. Once these critical values are exceeded, the space is deemed unsafe for evacuation. This is why, okay, the uh, available safe escape time shall be calculated according to the architect layout. Okay, and if we have any modifications in the uh, main structure of the of this uh, design, we have to recalculate the uh, available safe in this time or escape time. Then the required safe egress time or escape time also, okay, is defined as the time taken for people to reach a place of safety. We call it here in Egypt outside the building, which is defined as the protected space away from the immediate smoke zone where the tenability is being measured. This last sentence, it's clear in the uh, 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 American codes and the British codes, but it's not commonly uh, applied in our local codes in Egypt to uh, allow uh, to transfer the people, uh, high occupant load of people from zone to another zone safe. Otherwise, 
uh, you have a, 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 a minimum separation between these uh, two enclosures. Here we can see the human behavior. The human behavior normally like this. But here in this example, okay, they have the same age and the same gender. So these are men, they are ranged from 20 to 40 years, so they can walk like that and they can speed up also. Here, okay, another methodology of the evacuation system is to consider an area around each one, okay, for safe reason. This is 12 inch radius, here 18 inch radius. Then uh, this graph show from experimental uh, investigations, okay, by uh, many researchers that here you can see the working velocity, okay, which does not reach more than 1.6 meter per second. And here the density of people, the occupant load, what is the uh, uh, occupant load inside the room? For example, if I have a room 3.5 by 3, okay, and we have uh, 10 people, so you have to uh, divide this number of people to the area of the floor. Here you can see it's in a simple way for the floor rate people for per meter width of the egress uh, uh, of the door per second, and this is the density. So we can say generally that we have amount of people, these people shall go or shall, shall escape from a fixed size, uh, size width door or doors, maybe it's five or six doors, okay? And they will move in a corridor, okay? And then they may go outside the building or go to a stairs, okay? To go outside the building. All these with these uh, available speeds, okay, will be used to calculate the time for the escape. Here, very simple curve to see the young, adult, okay, and old. And this is the age and this is the working speed. Normally, you can find in many of the uh, life safety uh, references, okay, a table showing, okay, the, 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 um, uh, the details of the speed, okay, for the different uh, people. And here you can consider also a buffer. By the way, if you have an, an, an one exercise or two exercise in any building, then you will automatically can uh, judge and evaluate what is the required space for the people okay, who are hurry and want to go outside the building. You can see here some references. And this is the uh, uh, published year. Okay, uh, you can see the, the maximum design flow. Design flow, it means the flow from the doors. Okay, person per meter per second. And this is the ultimate. Normally, we have to use this. And you'll find all these uh, 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 names of the report and uh, the NFPA, for example, the AD uh, approved document B1. This is an observed graph of flow rate against density, okay, but from different sources, okay. It's a little bit all sources, but 
and this issues uh, the, the change on the speeds uh, are not dramatically uh, changed since 20 or 30 years. Okay, maybe the health of people become better, <laughs> except uh, these times uh, because of the coronaviruses. <laughs> uh, but the, for the speed during evacuation, okay, uh, with the presence of panic, okay, for the people, you will find that the speeds will be in average 1.3, okay, uh, person per meter width per second. Oh, this is for the size of the doors. Here you can see this is was presented in uh, a Aruba Consulting Office uh, in one of the brochures in the, the BRE. Uh, conferences, okay, and uh, you can see we have also, by the way, uh, uh, some softwares that can uh, uh, calculate the uh, A set and R set, okay, based on the fire engineering calculation and the data you will give it to it. Here you can see the presence of the elevators. Okay, sometimes we can consider some elevators for the civil defense, and these elevators and its shafts are treated with special pressurization to avoid any penetration from the smoke to it, and it will be pro around it protected, okay, by concrete uh, walls. All the sh this shaft will be concrete to protect this zone, uh, the hoist zone, uh, from penetration of fire and smoke. Again, first, the fire growth rate, normally the people uh, in the uh, civil defense, when they ask, first question they ask uh, for any project, what is the use of this project? Is it office building or residential building or factory or store or uh, uh, combination between them? or a mall, or shopping center, big shopping center, it's not a mall, for example. Uh, sometimes they ask to calculate the fire load. From the fire load, by analytical solution, or by using the CFD, we can calculate, we can calculate okay, the fire load in megawatt or kilojoule per second, Okay, uh, we can calculate this fire load. The fire load, it's, for example, six megaj uh, megajoules. For, for example, uh, for the, in the parking uh, garage, uh, the fire load of the car, it's about eight megawatts. And if this parking is totally sprinkled or covered with a sprinkler system, so we can reduce the fire load to four megawatts. This is uh, experimentally, uh, approved. So we have to know the fire growth rate. This means and uh, make a, a bell to us, okay, that the fire when it's occur, okay, will be spreaded and uh, transferred from zone to another, okay, in a certain time, okay. This time, it's from the ignition of the fire. Okay. Sometimes the uh, fire growth rate will be very minimum. And sometimes also, we treat the furniture with sprays and some uh, uh, additives okay, to make it retarded. I mean, retarded, it means that uh, we, 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 we minimize as as much as possible, the fire growth rate. Sometimes we have some uh, treatments to stop uh, the fire, but it's, it's very costly. So we have the slow fire and we have a medium fire growth rate and the fast and the ultra fast, ultra fast, same uh, uh, nearly the petrochemicals. Fast, it's uh, 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 thermoplastics and thermosets. Generally, the polymers, 
okay? Medium, it's the wood and the clothes. Slow, it's uh, uh, same like uh, uh, fresh papers and uh, 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 you can say the old uh, uh, new woods uh, with, with, uh, with uh, 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 including humidity, a certain level of humidity. Okay, we have now a fire with a growth rate and we can calculate the fire load. By the way, I, I forgot to, to, to mention, if you want to calculate the fire load for any place, you can calculate the mass, the mass of the material that can burn, woods, like uh, desks, tables, and the chairs, and if these chairs, including a sponge or uh, 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 petrochemicals, uh, materials. So you can calculate this mass and multiply this mass with the calorific value of this material and then divide it to the calculate the, uh, the, the, the calorific value of the wood. Then you got the equivalent fire load in wood material. And then you can judge, okay, the fire load based on this and it will be again uh, uh, you will got the this value in a megawatt or kilowatt or whatever will be the average of the material existing inside the place where we study and then okay we have to look which we, which is the weighted average is bigger the petrochemicals inside this mass or the woods or the paper or the files for example or the carpets okay from this weighted average you can know the fire growth rate how it will be in in which range fast or ultra fast so we go now to the other issues related to the fire if we have a fire and we insist to close on it so we may have a flashover phenomena. What is the flashover phenomena? Okay, uh, it is defined. A flashover point. It's a certain temperature point at which all combustible surfaces in a room burst into flame and discuss. The time interval between the ignition of an incendiary bomb and the time where flashover occurs and a valuable criterion in evaluating the relative effectiveness of various intensity bombs. What is this? Simply, when you have a fire, you will have a smoke under the ceiling. If the smoke accumulated and the room uh, is totally enclosed. So after a while, and this is in a minute, the temperature, okay, with the smoke under the ceiling will increase rapidly. And if the temperature reach about 680 or 700 degrees Celsius, then the, the other, Materials that far away from the from the fire inside this space will ignite automatically by the self-ignition temperature. This is what we called it flash over, and this is came from the radiation of the uh, smoke layer under the ceiling to the other material inside the room. Here the curves, okay of the flash over if the space is vented or is not vented you can see okay and we will define also another point to the back draft what is the back draft we will discuss it now okay but this is the case this means what is the region of this slide the region the reason of this slide is to show that we have a flash over phenomena may occur and we may have a backdraft may occur. And these two issues 
could be minimized if I may, we make a well ventilated fire. This means that we are adding amount of air and extract the smoke. The fire backdraft, okay, the Institution of Fire Engineering defined okay, backdraft as an explosion of greater or lesser degree caused by the inrush of fresh air from any source or cause into a burning building where combustible has been taking place in a shortage of air. You can see also this in most of the uh, uh, American films where when the uh, uh, fire brigade people try to access uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a building in a fire. So you find that the, 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 uh, the officer try to break the glass window, okay, far away from him by any, any material. And then you will find a boiling or a bomb coming from inside. What is the reason, the, 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 the source? Uh, simply, uh, you have amount of oxygen inside the space. This amount of oxygen, okay, will be reduced with the fire increase because the fire takes the oxygen and give us uh, 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 carbon uh, dioxide. After a while, you will have a lack of oxygen. So the combustion of the fire will be incomplete. So you will have, beside the carbon monoxide uh, uh, dioxide, you will have a carbon monoxide. The, uh, the, 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 the reaction of the carbon monoxide to be a dioxide, the carbon dioxide, it's uh, uh, very strong and leads to something like a boiling of the fire or a bomb, okay? So this is the background. This means that if we add the, a, a, a sufficient air to our system, okay, we will protect ourselves from the backdraft or even from the uh, flash of, you know. And this is the definition uh, stated by the NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, the, 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 the association where uh, they have uh, uh, all the research in, uh, in, in the United States. Now we go directly to the ventilated fire. This means we go again to the requirements or how can I judge if this building needs smoke or not, smoke management or not. So if the building is well ventilated, naturally ventilated, or well mechanically designed ventilated with a ventilation system, so I will not be worried, okay, uh, about the uh, flash over or backdraft. And I have to know uh, my fire load and the fire growth rate, how many minutes needs to be a fully, fully developed fire. Here, uh, two cases. Okay, and if you have a ventilation of air, you will have a scavenging of the smoke outside. What is the problem of the smoke here? The problem of the smoke here in any enclosure is that besides it's toxic for the human being, but the problem is that if the, the humans can work or can run within the smoke, they have to see the sign, the signage, the uh, escape signage which normally uh, installed about 1.8 to 2.2 from the finished floor level. So if they cannot see the signage, they will not know okay, uh, uh, the correct routing to uh, evacuate. And they will make a problems to the others okay, and make a lot of accidents. So this is very important okay, to keep the smoke to a certain level. What we are looking for, if we decide to make a smoke management system, to allow the smoke to reach the level where we will install the signage level, over it, for example, by five to 10 centimeters, okay? And this zone over the signage area, 
okay? We call it the smoke reservoir, where we will collect the smoke and then we start to extract it to outside the building. Then the people will run here, okay, or here, okay, in a, a, a nearly protected, okay, uh, and at least the, the visibility, and this is, will be a main important issue in the evacuation, our evacuation plan, uh, the visibility to see, okay, the doors and the stairs and the signage from at least 10 meters. Regarding to the doors, all the doors which we will use it inside the building, when we decide to make a smoke management system or not, you decide to make a smoke management system or not, these doors which separate between the area or the hazard area and the safe area or the safe routing for the evacuation shall be tested and know very well its neutral plan. What is the neutral plan? It's an imagining plan that we, uh, uh, it's a virtual, you can say a virtual, that we define it, okay, to split the door. The, if we have a fire inside, so you will have the exhaust air coming from here at the beginning of the fire and the fresh air coming from this zone. So the flow will be very low of fresh air and feeding the air a, uh, uh, automa not automatically, uh, uh, regular. After a while, when the fire load uh, starts to propagate and increase, and uh, the carpets and the sofa and the, uh, the chairs all the, are burned, then the smoke increase, and then it's become a bigger zone for the smoke and the small one of the fresh air. Then it's going down. Then you can see that the neutral plan coming down. What happened here? If this test room is bigger and include another furniture, okay, you will may have a flash over all the others and it will become a disaster. So this is a summary of the uh, uh, doors that we will use. And we, as an HVAC engineers, willing to design a smoke management system, we have to be sure that okay, our colleagues in the fire engineering team who will select the doors and the accessories of the doors and from our side, the dampers which shall be installed in the supply or return air that this damper shall be sealed. So we have the fire doors and the motorized damper. Okay, we have a code of installation. There is a special proper ways for the installation of these two issues and the accessory standards. I mean the hinged, the lock, okay, the frame, okay, the sealant of the frame, okay, or the handle, all these are stated in many standards, okay. Uh, uh, there is a, a European standard and there is an American standard, okay, for these uh, testing types, okay, to be sure that this will seal the smoke and the fire. And uh, in another way, in another thing is to be to have a low temperature from uh, from the escape size, the low temperature of the door surface. For our dampers, we have to to be sure that our dampers will be totally sealed, not 100 percent, no, but there is uh, regulations for testing the dampers and be sure, okay that to select the minimum leakage. So, the principles, 
of our lecture now is a fire safety shell study, one time taken to escape and time for tenable condition. Tenable conditions okay, mean many parameters, we will discuss it, and then compare the both uh, these two times and make the judgment as to whether the performance criteria required by the regulations have been met. So you can prepare and you make your design and then you, you specify all the equipment that can provide you and the uh, occupants uh, with attainable conditions during the escape time, and then you can construct and use. Here, this is the attainability criteria. By the way, all the white <coughs> colored uh, parameters are related to the Egyptian code and uh, nearly uh, near to the uh, NHPA or the uh, North America codes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six parameters. You have to prove, to prove by evidences, whatever these evidences, it's as we mentioned before, uh, by comparative, by CFD, Okay, by analytical solution, as before, before uh, uh, using the CFD, we are calculating everything analytically, okay, with equations. And by the way, for the, uh, the, the, the fresh graduate engineer who are uh, interested in these items, they can find all the equation of the smoke generation and the smoke uh, uh, mitigations and the induction ratios, all the things are indicated in the NFPA. 101 or what we call it the life safety code and you will find the detailed equation and the examples in NFPA 92A and 92B and for the venting, natural venting, you will find it in NFPA 204 okay and for the installation of the HVC devices like dampers, control dampers, smoke and fire damper, you will find it in the NFPA 90 okay for the proper installation back to the uh, criteria that we have to prove it these six parameters represent the indoor uh, environment that we keep it in these limits or better than these limits sure will be better okay to the time required to evacuate the people and the time required for the uh, officers from the fire brigade to access the building and uh, deal with the fire. This a big time, okay? First one is the hot layer height. One of the problems that faced the old people is that if you have a small fire and you have a smoke layer, a small fire, but uh, the fire growth it's high. Uh, so the fire load it's a little bit uh, small, but uh, it's, it increases uh, rapidly till it's steady state or till it's fully developed fire. Okay. Uh, so the smoke move under the ceiling. The radiation coming from the 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 uh, uh, the addition of the smoke layer okay, uh, shall not exceed a certain amount. Why? Uh, to be sure that it will not re reach uh, the breathing level and to avoid the radiation effect, which is declared in the second point, okay, uh, from them to their heads. The old people cannot uh, 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 sustain or keep. Uh, 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 aware if the temperature over them exceed 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. So first we have to 2.5 meters when layer is below the height, visibility and temperature become important. Okay, if the smoke coming less than 2.5 meters, okay, so the visibility, the visibility, maybe the visibility of sign exits or the doors or the egress doors or the egress elevators, if it's uh, designed for that, okay, could be uh, hardly. So they will not 
know the proper way, the, the, the proper routing, I mean. Okay. Uh, this could be conserved this as 1.8 meters. Then the radiation effect, okay, you can calculate it simply by the average temperature of the smoke layer, okay, and divided by the area okay, of the net egress routing. For example, if you, are, you, you decide, you, de, you define or you state that the evacuation will follow this corridor, so you can imagine, okay, uh, uh, that the smoke will move the, in this corridor, so you can calculate the area, projected area, I mean, of the uh, this corridor, and you can divide, okay, the average uh, heat coming from by radiation, sure. I mean, uh, so you can use uh, the equation of the radiation, the normal one, okay, on the head of the people, considering that the head has uh, 30 or uh, 28. Uh, or 32 uh, or 36 degrees Celsius, uh, the normal temperature of the human body. Then the visibility, 10 meters. When smoke falls below 2.5 meters, if we now we are moving with a smoke reservoir or the uh, uh, smoke zone, okay, uh, over the people, okay, from uh, 2.5 till 1.8. So, head, okay, fires may relatively cool and dilute smoke stratifying below head height. Stratification may occur when remote larger fires. Okay, this stratification normally appears if we have uh, a, a huge fire load fires. Okay, then the toxicity. Okay, uh, most of the, uh, the furniture and the carpets that uh, manufactured using the petro petrochemicals uh, uh, material, okay, generate uh, a very toxic gases like cyanides and, and their acids. And this, okay, it's uh, uh, has uh, an exposure time in seconds, two or three seconds, and a concentration inside the uh, air uh, with uh, the range of uh, three to 10 particles per million. So this means that some material, when it's burned, okay, produce a very toxic gases, which will, with, with, a, mini, with a, a very small concentration and for exposure to the people in a very short time, they will die. So, uh, uh, simply here we consider Okay, in Egypt, that if the visibility is greater than 10 meters, and normally we use it 30, 30, 30 meters, so still all these hot gases are far away from the people. Egress time, the egress time from the remote space within the building is about 10 minutes with a factor of safety of two. This is the maximum factor of safety, double. The available safe escape time is proposed to be 25 minutes maximum. This is for the Egyptian local code. I don't know what is these values. We, you can dot it this value from the civil defense or the fire brigade officers. Uh, finally, we have uh, <clears throat> the temperature. And the temperature shall be of the smoke layer shall be less than 65 degrees Celsius. Okay, when a smoke layer falls between 2.5 meters for occupant moving through smoke. So, in any design of smoke management system, me as a, a, a technical reviewer, <clears throat> we ask, please show me your methodology for evacuation and your most stringent fire scenarios. And both on these two issues, please provide me with the evidences that you will meet these requirements. Very simply. If can do it with a natural ventilation, 
And from the beginning, he proved that the evacuation of the people okay, will be less than three minutes. So no need, no need to uh, use the mechanical smoke management system and the and and and, and uh, don't forget that your 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 studies shall include an extra time. This is why we consider here a safety factor too, okay, uh, for the egress, okay, or uh, ac uh, sorry, access for the civil defense inside the building. Here, a simple example. In British standards, what we called it, the approved document B, they stated the level or classification for the building based on the risk profile and the occupation. So, yeah, I, I found it, it's very useful concept to describe uh, what we discussed before. They classify class A building, Occupy this building that shall have occupants who are awake and familiar with the building, like our cases in our homes or our cases in uh, uh, in in um, in our offices. For example, if you don't have uh, an electricity and uh, at night and you uh, you want to go out of your apartment, you can do it. You can do it hardly, but you can do it, okay? Because you are awake and you are familiar with the building and you know that you have the stairs here and there's another stair here and I can use the main stairs from this side, okay? All these items are important. And then you classify, okay, the fire growth rate. And then you can declare very clearly uh, the risk profile. Okay, A1, A2, uh, this is what are stated in their uh, code. Class B, occupants who are awake, but are unfamiliar with buildings. When we go to any mall, any new shopping center, okay, you are getting inside, you are uh, 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 interested in uh, to see all the goods and the uh, <coughs> pavilions, okay? Uh, and you are not caring about the uh, escape routes and how can I reach the stairs. So you are not a familiar. Class C, occupants who are likely to be asleep. This is uh, simply like our home. And by the way, you will find the fire growth rate also. Okay. Uh, in NFPA or SFPE, SFPE, uh, it's, it's, uh, a society of a fire protection engineer. It's a very big society in the United States. They uh, introduce uh, uh, a great and uh, uh, handbook for all these issues. Maybe it, in, 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 it, it is introduced in a different way, but it, it is uh, indicated with the same concept. C, occupants likely to be asleep, long-term individual occupancy, long-term managed occupancy like in the hotels. So this means that somebody are awake and can uh, ask you and short-term occupancy like in hotel in the, uh, uh, in the wedding festivals, all these things are made in the hotels. So you, go, you, you enter the hotel two or three times so you know uh, simply uh, where is the uh, English routings, Okay, and uh, with high occupancy, okay, it's and the people working in the hotel, they can manage this uh, evacuation. Occupants receiving medical care, like in hospitals and healthcare facilities. Occupants in transit, this is special, very special issues, like railway stations and airports. And you will find that the smoke reservoirs in these applications are so big. This means that if you have a very ceiling high, a long, a very high ceiling level, so you will have a, a good smoke reservoir to collect the smoke for a certain time. Okay, this could be added. Okay, 
in your time. And, and by the way, you collect this smoke and the smoke will dissipate his heat, its heat, okay, in the uh, building structure. So the temperature of the smoke, okay, will be a little bit lower. And if you have a sprinkler system, it will be reduce it also more than uh, you expect. This is, has a good impact in selecting our smoke fans. Because if you go to a special ex extract, uh, uh, smoke extract fans with 600 degrees Celsius, it's very, very expensive because it's from a balanced steel alloy. But if you uh, work with uh, 300 or 350, you will have an aluminum alloy one. Okay, it's completely different in cost. And another way, the type of the dampers, the cost of the type of the dampers, the cost of the ducting system, the cost, the cost of the uh, 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 inlets and outlets. Here, in most common codes, they stated that we can, we have to make a pressurized system, pressurization system inside the stairs and in the uh, uh, elevator shaft. Okay, to protect these egress routes okay, from any penetration of the uh, fire or and the smoke. This is why uh, we consume uh, uh, some uh, minutes in this presentation about the door, because here it's, it's an important issue, because it will have, if you have a very good separation okay, between the affected zone and the stairs, okay, so you are B. Uh, uh, assure that okay, the people uh, 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 travel time from the source of fire till here, okay, will be a minimum. If they get inside this, they are in a protected zone. Here, uh, what is the required pressurization according to different standards? The British standard, the Australian one, uh, Singapore, Canada, USA, this is the Uniform Building Code, okay, the NFPA, okay, and finally, part four, the British standard, okay, which is a little bit old, but it is still the same except for the high rise buildings, okay. Uh, and this is the leakage for the standard uh, doors, what is the leakage area and the crack. Okay, so you can calculate the losses of air, you will lose it here, and you can consider this door, it will be normally open all the time during evacuation with a, 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 a discharge of pressurized air, okay, with about 1.5 meter uh, per second. Remember the pressure gradients, it means that we have to be sure that the bridge are gradient inside the elevator shafts and the uh, uh, stairs, egress stairs or escape stairs, okay, will not exceed a certain level. Otherwise, the old people and the young the child cannot open the door because of the pressure at the other side. So, okay, uh, we have a table, this table uh, uh, from the bridge standard. Okay, state okay, the size uh, uh, of the door and the uh, force required for the door closer. Okay, and here, how can I control okay, the pressurization fan okay, here? And sometimes we uh, use an airlock. It's a, a, a vestibule, a vestibule uh, between the stairs, the stairs and the affected area. Okay. Uh, so to be an airlock, if you enter here, then this door will close and uh, uh, you can open this and go, so it will be balanced here, okay? Or you can, uh, uh, as, as in this uh, figure, uh, you extract, okay, from the top point of the corridor, but don't forget in any system, uh, uh, smoke management system to add, okay, uh, the makeup air. The system will not work properly if you don't give
Okay. This in energized, you can see these damper are energized for smoke extraction. Okay. And these dampers on the upper and lower floors or story, okay, will close. Okay. <clears throat> so these doors will be pressurized. We can say that we are making a sandwiching. Okay, you are feeding air, you are feeding in the stairs, fresh air, pure fresh air, and you make an extraction from the affected floor. Okay, so you, you can say that we, we made the sandwiching of the extraction. And here we start the extraction. And you can adapt the variable speed drive to adapt the pressure. Okay, because if you are feeding here, in this case, we are feeding for each three, four with a, with a point of fresh air to pressurize the stir. Okay, <clears throat> but for low level, for example, till uh, four floors, you can use a single point pressurization. But how we can control the pressure here compared with this, with this level here compared with this? So you have to have a, some variable speed drive or some. Uh, air balance okay to adapt the pressure to be homogeneous and uniform in all the vertical level of the project then here the control with the uh, other dampers here we have the the damper of the shaft and pressurized the lobby of the elevators so <clears throat> you will find here uh, about 20 items yes 20 items for the precautions that we have to consider when we design the smoke management system. These 20 items shall move us to the beginning of this lecture. Is, is it this building means a smoke evacuation or not? If it's stated by the laws and the uh, local codes, so it's okay. But some uh, uh, projects, does not need that, okay? And we are consuming a lot of money for something could be solved naturally. And to be uh, clear, if you want to do it naturally, you have to follow uh, the performance-based design because you have to consider the prevailing winds and the direction of wind and where we will, where the air will enter the building and how it, it will scavenge the smoke outside the building, all this naturally by stack effect or by buoyancy effect, whatever it is. But this is normally could be carried out using the uh, CFD or the uh, numerical solution. Okay. Uh, and then this is the pr procedure that we have to, uh, uh, to follow to make a proper uh, uh, design of the smoke management system and during this procedure you may find that no need to make the smoke management system if the available safe escape time is less quietly without safety factor okay for the occupant than the required safe escape time and the same for the people from coming from the fire brigades. So I have to consider all the time from the ignition till the people of the officers of the fire brigades get inside and uh, uh, extinguish this fire. So the conclusion are the need of a smoke management system and or smoke control system. Here it's a difference, little bit difference shall be designed based on the available set, safe uh, escape time and required savings time, which is greater, and we can adapt it by our mechanical systems, considering the terrible conditions within egress routing. Here, the smoke management system, in general, if we want to talk to it after knowing the, 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 the adequate information about the Ignition, about the flame propagation, about the doors, about the fire alarm, about the response time of the sprinklers and the, the uh, detector systems. Okay, 
you can design the smoke management system in a proper way. Smoke control method that utilizes natural or mechanical systems to maintain a tenable environment in the means of egress from a large volume space or to control and reduce the migration of smoke between the fire area and surrounding spaces. While the smoke control system, an engineered system, it's a system designed, okay, that includes all methods and ways that can be used singly. If you have an atrium inside it, an open atrium inside the building, so you can use it for a natural, a natural smoke extraction, singly or in combination to modify the smoke movement to control the smooth movement to a certain way and move and design my egress routing in another way. So you protect your people from uh, the hazard of smoke. Thank you very much for your listening. Yeah, thank you, Professor Ahmad. Thank you. Now we have, yeah, now we have some questions from the participants. Uh, mm, yeah. I want to invite Mr. K D Singh. Yeah, yeah, Shailendra ji, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Professor, uh, I had a, a question on uh, the actual uh, design of the uh, uh, the the uh, the smoke extract system for a parking basement ventilation so yes. uh, you know i've encountered uh, you know uh, while during my tenure of execution i've encountered that suppose the floor to slab height is say let's assume hypothetically you know 12 feet or 13 feet and uh, there is single stack car parking and uh, in india mostly we've been using uh, ducted uh, systems for exhaust so if the duct is installed at 10 feet height so while calculating the number of air changes, like our, our, our code says 12 ACPH in case of fire. So uh, uh, would it not be more economical or would it not be the right practice to take only the occupied zone up to the 10 feet level as the virtual height while calculating the number of air changes and not go to 13 or 14 feet height to make the uh, design more economical and maybe more uh, energy efficient? Okay. Look, uh, normally, what's stated in the uh, official codes is that a minimum acceptable uh, parameters uh, approved by the government. First of all, okay, whatever these parameters are prescriptive, coming from prescriptive code or <clears throat> or uh, performance-based design issues. Uh, the minimum, internationally, by the way, the minimum level of the uh, signage area, which is very important issue in the evacuation plan of the parking, okay, shall be installed minimum at 1.8 meters. Sometimes, if you have an, enough height, you will have 2.2 or 2, something like that. So, uh, <clears throat> maybe because uh, the people in Egypt are not very tall, <laughs> so we, we use this, uh, uh, this uh, range. But normally, we, 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 we are looking for uh, to make an enough smoke reservoir to collect the smoke. If, in your case, you are talking about a single uh, extract point, right? Am I right or not? You're no, no. I was talking of a single. I'm talking of a single stack parking. So I'm talking about uh, what I'm also referring to is that uh, about the stack of parking, the height of parking. There's only one car parked instead of two cars. Like in uh, maybe in a in a basement of 12 feet height or 15 feet height, you could park. You know, you could do a parking at two levels, one above the other. You can use a you know a, a parking management system which can do two cars one above the other so i'm talking of a single uh, stack yeah. excuse me excuse me i'm talking about the mechanical parking systems yeah yeah so i am talking of uh, i'll once again repeat my question professor 
i am only trying to do uh, I, as you rightly said i'm trying to do a design which is energy efficient because i will have to do not only a, a, a normal ventilation that is based on the co levels i'll have to keep couple of air changes on to keep the co levels in place so if i consider the complete height suppose i complete the take the complete height of 12 of 14 feet height and actually wow. my occupied zone is only only the, the human occupancy height is where i need a person to run so that is where i need the least amount of toxicity of the smoke and the least and the best opacity of the smoke yes. that is the least opacity uh, 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 so I, if i, I consider only the occupied zone i am able to reduce the number of air changes i am able to reduce the number of uh, not the air changes but the number of the cfm the air quantity i am able to reduce i am able to downsize my fans Uh, excuse me this is uh, this is not accepted acceptable why because yeah, tell me. normally yeah. we, we don't we don't we normally we, we don't accept uh, the use of number of any change in the car parking because uh, we have some calculations that should be made these calculations especially for the mechanical parking you have uh, two cars one over the other okay Uh, maybe you have a good smoke reservoir and you don't need uh, to make the ventilation rate uh, with all the height no we calculate it based on okay that you have a, a, a progression progression fire load coming from a car and after a while okay this fire could be transferred to the adjacent adjacent car or for the top car okay so uh, if you use uh, a safety for something like that okay so you have to consider in the in this program that you use okay uh, that this uh, fire it's increased with the time okay and then for the codes now but uh, for the codes if the amount of air or the extracted smoke coming from your calculations on from the cfd is less than is less than uh, what's stated by the your government so you have to take the uh, minimum stated by the government if not I, in life safety excuse me okay uh, 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 we are not uh, uh, squeezing the project to save the money Okay, but we are carrying with the budget of the, uh, the cost budget of the project. Okay, but at least we are talking uh, about life safety. So, okay, you have to consider the uh, most stringent scenario. By the way, you can uh, check uh, if you have the NFPA 101 or the life safety code of NFPA chapter five, performance based option. You will find that. The, 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 the researcher or the experts stated by experimentants uh, different scenarios that shall be uh, considered in, in any uh, case like uh, your case. You find the, these scenarios shall be considered because we are talking about uh, uh, human lives. Okay, so you are talking now uh, to save amount of air, to save amount, this equipment. Uh, the same like the fire pump will not work maybe 10 years, 15 years, unless, okay, if you have a fire. So you have uh, to consider this issue. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Thank you very much. So that was a, that was a, uh, that was a debate that, uh, that, that was a question that was, I just wanted to ask you with your experience. So I, I will advise, uh, I will ask you for something. You can you can follow and make the fence, okay, with the uh, actual uh, rates and discharge flow rate. I mean, okay, according to the calculations, okay, uh, and you use it in the ventilation. You can make the ventilation system, okay, uh, in in in, uh, in in steps. Okay? You have a fire, so you move to the fire, uh, to the fire uh, scenario. I was just coming to Professor the effective height. I was just talking about the effective height, so that was my question. So I think you're of the opinion that we go for the complete height. I think that's what you're saying, because it's I a know, fire and fire. 
I yeah? know, I know, but you have to have also a smoke reservoir. You can, for example, why they stated in all codes, all international codes, that the minimum acceptable, the minimum acceptable height of the in the car parking not less than 2.5 or 2.6 meters, because you have at least you you will have uh, 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 utilities, uh, uh, lighting fixtures, uh, smoke detectors, uh, sprinklers. Okay, so you have to have an enough smoke reservoir to collect the smoke, and then you can make a smoke compartmentation to compartment to 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 to, uh, to, to protect the movement of smoke and suck it. But if you are talking about a huge uh, parking, for example, okay, parking area, and you leave the smoke to move in all directions, it will cool and go down, not beside the, the fire, but uh, far away after. Uh, 50 meters or 100 meters, it will cool and go down. So we, we do nothing. This is why we ask if you if you have a, a huge area or a parking garage, you have to have a smoke compartmentation. And there is a limit of this smoke compartmentation, not more than 2,500 uh, square meter. This is give you an indication that this travel, the smoke literal, literal uh, movement Okay, will not make a layer or a, a, a layer depth more than 60 or 80 centimeters. This is it's it's it's, it's enough for us to, to start sucking the uh, this smoke and put away, not to, tra to 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 transfer the smoke to another another uh, zone. I I hope that I you got my point. Yeah, I got your point, sir. I understand about the fire compartmentation, and then we have we have actually fire uh, no fire curtains. We have the water curtains uh, along the fire zones. Yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. So I think water you answered curtain question. is not quite enough. By the way, water curtain is not quite enough because water water you will. By the way, you have to make a, a, a small exercise. What is the cost of the water tank? Okay, and the cost of the pumps. Uh, using the water curtain, okay, to 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 to, to compartmentate, to make the compartmentation, compared with, for example, roller shutter or uh, uh, curtains, okay, you will find that the cost of increasing the size of your tank and the amount of water, it's huge, but because uh, in your in your in your design. Okay, you are you are concerned with the smoke evacuation. If you are responsible also with the fire protection and for the water resources, okay, you will consider ah uh, the tank will increase dramatically to to make this water curtain working for the time of egress time. Ah, please check it. Sure. Okay. So uh, my uh, next question to you, sir, is that uh, most of the people who do the parking, basement parking, ventilation, uh, CFD analysis, uh, do they consider that when a fire is a fire exit, a fire occurs, the water curtains also come down. So the water curtains also become operational. So the boundary conditions of the air actually, which is being extracted or the temperatures at which is going will get changed. But what, what we find is normally people who do the CFD for basement parking ventilation do not consider the water curtains, you know, energized at the time when they do the CFD. So do you think it's the right practice or what is being done is the right thing or there are some, you know, something that we need to modify going forward from here? Look, uh, recently we started to uh, ask all the designers when they uh, use the performance-based design uh, for the car ventilation to consider okay, the time for the fire alarm response. This means that the designer of the jet fans or the ducting system or whatever, the designer of the smoke management system inside the parking shall coordinate okay, purely with the fire alarm and with the sprinklers. And if you want to make a CFD, okay, we start, we, we, we stop accepting any uh, CFD without sprinklers. This is 
one year ago or one and a half year. Okay, we have to have the uh, the effect of the, the water for the smoke because you will find uh, that the smoke compartmentation shall be uh, less. But at the other hand, if you go with the analytical solution, not with CFD, the analytical solution, okay, and it's it's little bit very hard, okay, <laughs> not not little bit, it's very hard. Uh, you will find that the effect of the sprinklers, okay, with this smoke layer or near the fire, you will have a steam regeneration, a steam uh, a change of the water to uh, part of it to steam, and cool the uh, uh, the smoke layer quickly. This means that we have to start to suck or to extract this smoke okay, quickly. Okay. This means that the diagonal, the, the virtual diagonal of the smoke compartmentation, okay, between the farthest point, okay, in the in this smoke compartmentation to the point of extraction shall not exceed. This is we, we, we do it here in Egypt experimentally, okay, shall not exceed 65 meter length. Otherwise, okay, you will find that the smoke. Okay, coming down, uh, coming down, uh, and the suit also, and the suit, okay, and this uh, minimize the range of the visibility, okay, from 30 meters to 20 or 10 meters. Okay, 10 meters could be accepted, okay, but uh, it, it is the minimum requirement. It, it, we call it the thresholds that. Critical. I don't know what is during construction can happen, and or what happened if two cars, okay, are uh, burdened together. Especially that during burning, uh, burning of the cars, the, the starts uh, uh, will be from inside, and then the body and the wheels, and then you will have all the O-rings and uh, 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 sealants, okay, destroyed. And then the oil coming down, this uh, start to transfer directly the flame from place to another. This is why I try all the time to mention okay, uh, that I need to see the sprinklers, especially to collect the amount of water, by the way. Okay? Uh, because if you have a, a, a little bit a little bit water in the ground, uh, uh, the people may sleep. And sometimes, if you increase the amount of air to suck, you will have something called sprinkler skipping. If you add the sprinklers, you put in the garage a total sprinkler system, and you said that, okay, I will increase the amount of smoke extraction, double of the calculation to be calculation. It's, it's, I'm not happy of this to double the value because you will have a, a, a high velocity of air, high velocity of air or smoke, whatever, okay, will make the water coming from the sprinklers to to be on the next sprinkler. It will not operate the next one if you have amount of air. We call it a, 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 a water sprinkler skipping. Okay, it, it's not good. Okay, to increase it, try to adjust everything. Okay, within the acceptable range, okay, and you can add different compartmentation. Okay, I know that different compartmentation it's, it means different uh, extract point, but you can make this different compartmentation with a horizontal extract uh, protected uh, fire protected duct. Okay, from other zone. Okay, and trying to collect uh, seven or eight zones in one opening or one uh, uh, fan rooms okay to to, uh, to 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 minimize the amount of space that we utilize because this space is with the money okay uh, okay i'm using a mechanical room but this mechanical room it's a space could be used uh, as a car park <laughs> so we, are, we 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 make the 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 the, the, the client lose uh, uh, some money in this uh, mechanical room, but at the same time, I, 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 I'm telling that 
and be sure also that the uh, the room size shall be enough for the proper maintenance and proper operation and minimize the noise also of the fans because you have a limit of the noise okay during fire to allow the people to hear the announcements coming from the speakers otherwise they will not uh, uh, hear any anything okay any other question uh, thanks professor Ahmed. you're welcome yeah you took out valuable time from your busy schedule and deliver another webinar on smoke management it is really insight and you have explained beautifully human behavior said many more and earlier on 11th may 20 you got the excellent webinar of safety sir thank you sir excuse thank me, you sir for two webinars excuse, excuse me the the the, the I, I couldn't hear yeah. half of the words <laughs> the internet it's a little bit slow uh, sir earlier uh, yeah earlier on 11th may uh, you delivered the excellent webinar on CFD. So, thank you, sir. I, I cannot understand I the question. I would like to thank you all participants. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank to all the participants yeah, yeah. for patient learning. So, webinar around 200 participants attended and benefited. I also express gratitude to Mr. K.D. Singh, President-elect, Delhi Chapter of Ishray, Mr. K.K. Mitra, President, Delhi Chapter of Ishray, Mr. Rishabh Kasliwal, President, Ashraistan Chapter, Mr. Varun, President, Ishray India Chapter, for holding us in the right? Because this webinar will be a middle of Ashraistan Chapter. Uh, all the participants and thank you very much thank you and thank you thank you professor and thank, you. thank you very much thank you and, and see you so soon in another session <laughs> yeah surely look forward to that sir thank you very much thank you bye bye bye